Hey YouTube, 2016, we're back. Sonic Squeeze, we're, we're back, we're making videos again. I lost confidence. Hey YouTube, it's Kit Campbell here with another episode of the Sonic Squeeze. In fact, we're back, we've been on holiday for how long? Like a month. Like a month. Um, We've been seeing our family, eating lots of dinner, um, partying for the new year, working hard, trying to, thinking about starting dissertations and then doing this instead. <laughs> and also we have some cool things to say about the channel and it's going good. And what is good about the channel we've done now, today? Now we're handing it over to me because I know all the analytics. He's him. We've got... Over 100 subscribers over on the 100? YouTube channel. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's, that's more than 90. We have got over 1,000 views on our first video. And by first, I don't mean first video on the channel. I mean... It's the first video to get 1,000 views. <laughs> yes. That's, and, that's more than and 90. And that is our uh, review of Black Star The Track. By Bowie. Which and over 90. we are now on... 10,000 views for the whole channel. I thought it was more than that. Now. It's that's over 90. Wow. Well, I mean... Technically, we're on about nine thousand nine hundred and something. Seriously, right, right now. But by the time this comes out, you know. Oh, fair enough. That's we're 90. deceiving you. But we, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we respect you. So. Don't know how that works. Here we go. Yeah. Episode one, twenty sixteen. Yeah, we'll see you after the the music that goes. -da -da -da. That's already happened. We've already done a preamble. Do -do -do. We did a preamble. No, no that's. I that was the that's... Hey, Sonic Squeeze, and today we're talking about Black Star, David Bowie's album. Yeah, I, it's it's really it's really sad. He's he's died. He's dead. Who you what? He's. Why did nobody tell me? I I didn't know. You didn't know, man. I mean, like you've just reviewed his album, like at home. Firstly, I'd like to say how sad we all were to hear about his death um, and his struggle with cancer. It caught me completely off guard. How about you? How off guard were you when you heard the news? Completely. Oh, okay. I was. <laughs> I woke up at 6 a.m. in the morning and I was like, fuck, it's 6 a.m. in the morning. Why am I awake right now? And then I was like, I'm going to turn the radio on because I don't know what else to do. And I turned the radio on and said, and David Bowie has died. And I was like, I'm never waking up this yeah. early again. Six in the morning sucks. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> and then you woke me up by sending me that message. Yeah, and I was like... Saying that David Bowie died. And I was like, fuck, he's right. <laughs> We're never getting up at this time. <laughs> the last, last time I ever read your text. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and then I thought, shit, he just brought out a new album. Like, he, and he's died. And I thought... Well, he's left off the, with, with, with a little. He's left us with this gift. How awesome is that? And then, like a few hours later, people started making connections. Like, ah, oh, all the, the the content of the album is all like he knows he's dying. Especially it's, Lazarus. Yeah, it's and, it's very clear that he 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 planned this. Which yeah, is yeah. pretty cool. Like you're like, no, no, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on my own terms. I'm gonna do this cool thing. Yeah, it's pretty special. Like, um, it because we all listened to the album before he died. And then it's like a completely new context is thrown over mm. the whole album. So then you have to go back and listen to it again. And uh, then it becomes like blindingly obvious, like what it's all about. Because it was kind of enigmatic. Like the whole album is very kind of mysterious and full of things like, I know something, but you don't know it kind of stuff. And it was, it was spectacular. I feel privileged to bear witness to that piece of sort of musical historical art. I, I think it's a very rare thing. He turned his entire life into one piece of art. I think this album is going to be very significant historically, culturally. Yeah. I'm going to listen to it again and again and again. Yeah. What do you think of this album then? I think he left on a good note. So do I. It was because I, I was like... I, for a while, I haven't, because I, I liked Bowie's early stuff more than I liked any of his, his later stuff already. Yeah. So, uh, like, for me, I sort of, over the years, I'd lo like lost interest in listening to his new stuff. Okay. And then this was the first one that I was really like, like, 
okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go. It probably will be, you know, all right. Like, he's never made anything bad, I think. But, yeah. And then I was like, well, this is actually, like, cool as hell. Like, it's it's lots of really fast percussion-y stuff. Lots of really interesting stuff. A lot of, like we said in the single review for Blackstar, uh, uh, quite a lot like the Trent Reznor version of the Disco King. A lot yeah, of it yeah. Has that sort of vibe, which like, I really like. It's really kind of stylish dark, and kind of stylish, overproduced yeah. almost. Uh, the album was like jazzy and hazy mm. and smoky and dreamy. Yeah. And like really fantastic uses of dissonance and rhythm. Mm. And that fucking like saxophone. Throughout yeah. the album, like, it's haunting on so many tracks by uh, Danny McCaslin. I'll have you know. Awesome. I, I actually was wondering who the guy was. Big up Danny McCaslin. McCaslin. <laughs> MCD. Cass <laughs> Lee. It's like you can hear how much time he spent in New York from like the jazziness mm. all over this album. It's like it's really seeped into his, yeah. his very bones. Yeah. Um, and there's so much which is classic Bowie. Yes. While also having so much experimentation. I felt especially Dollar Days like really made me think of like early Bowie stuff. And mm. I, I just like but it all sounds new and has this, this style that's consistent throughout <coughs> all the songs, whether ones sound more like Trent Reznor or ones that sound more like old school Bowie. I love how his voice is aged. I feel like his you know his like vibrato he's got in his voice. Mm. Oh, I can't do it. But it's like really <laughs> <laughs> It's really like <clears throat> deep vibrato. Mm. It's like I didn't have to put it in other sense, but like the modulation mm. very deep. Like if I'm mm. fucking with like a tremolo plugin and I pull in my the, I'm gonna say, I can't I can't express it in Full a musical wet on way. The LFO. Full yeah. Wet. <laughs> it's <laughs> like making his voice into a dubstep bass. <laughs> yeah, like the, the wave if you're looking at it as a it's like We looking, understand. Yeah. Okay, we understand. <laughs> Um, I don't. Could you explain it again? <laughs> <laughs> there were also... Because he did a lot of kind of drum and bass stuff in, like, was, the 90s. Mm. There was, like, a reintroduction, of, a reintroduction of that on tracks like Sue and Tis a Pity. The mm. breakbeat on Sue was fucking pretty cool. tasty as yeah. shit. That had some pretty <laughs> rad guitar as well. I really liked yeah, the that guitar. That song was just, was like, awesome. it was pretty out of this world. I was hearing, like, sci-fi, like, sound effects. Yeah. I think I heard a theremin at one point. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that song. And the lyrics throughout the entire album. Just on point. Fucking incredible. Absolutely, Absolutely incredible. Point. Absolutely incredible. And there were loads of like little things that I picked up on just by doing a little bit of research. <clears throat> Lots which, of, I'll, uh, which I'll go through now. Yeah. I'll go through now. Lots of Bowie weirdness all over this album, which is great. <clears throat> yeah. So, <clears throat> track five, yeah. Girl Loves Me, mm-hmm. there's a lyric which... At the time, probably didn't mean much, but now the we know that <coughs> excuse me know that he died on the Sunday, right? Yeah, where the fuck did Monday go? Where the fuck did Monday go? And that is something that a lot of people have kind of made that connection of because not only was it he wasn't physically there to enjoy Monday, but because everyone found out about it on the Monday. Mm. Mm. Lots of Monday people became kind of, Bowie it, Day. It became, yeah. Loads of people are going to write in the comments once again, why is he saying Bowie and not Bowie? I said Bowie. Did you say Bowie? Yeah. I've I'm, I'm, been saying Bowie all I'm the time. I'm still saying it. <laughs> and everyone who's <coughs> telling me I'm wrong. Uh, other things... You know what track. I think of you. <laughs> oh, you have to tell the audience, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> not the audience, specifically the people who are telling me I'm saying it wrong. That's everybody. I'm doing it. That is that everyone. Is everyone. That is I'm everyone. doing it for you. Um... <laughs> so yeah, the other lyrics in that track are half, I don't know how you pronounce it, Polari, or Polari, which is like a slang language that was used in gay clubs in the 1970s. Didn't know that. And uh, there was also was in the track, the hey, come on guys, <laughs> uh, there was in Dollar Days, the lyric if I'll never see the English evergreens mm. I'm running to, it's nothing to me. Which has been kind of looked at as though he's specifically talking about the afterlife mm. and referring to the afterlife as English evergreens. But he's saying that if he finds out that there isn't an afterlife, then it won't mean much to him. Mm. He doesn't mind whether there's an afterlife or not. Like, 
throughout this entire album, it's all about mortality. Mm. Yeah. And the fact that we now know, and the, the whole world knows, that it was very personal to him. Yeah. It's given the entire album a new context that just can't, like, be... You couldn't address this in a, any other form. Yeah. Mm. And it's so powerful. It's incredible. I really. Sh- I feel like we shouldn't talk too much about Black Star because we've already got, like, a whole review on that one. But, but it's good. what I will say is that I gave that song, like, an 8 or a 9. I can't remember yeah. exactly which I gave it, but I'm afraid it's a 10 now. Yeah, I, it is a 10 now. I, I would yeah, happily now you, give Now it you've 10. got the context, you'd have to bump it up. And also, I've just been listening to it like crazy recently. Mm. And it's like, that song, man. This whole album, like, especially... I, I would also give Lazarus a 10. I'd give Lazarus a 10 as well, yeah. I'd give Tis a Pity. She was a whore. Uh, probably an 8 or a 9. Uh, like girl, girl loves me. I'd give a 10 as well. I, I, really, like, like, give I really like Dollar Days. I think Dollar Days. Yeah, be... Dollar Days is one of my favourites. Yeah. I mean, Lazarus, the meaning of that song. Like, Also, did you notice, in the final track, yeah. I Can't Give Everything Away, um, <clears throat> he uses a harmonica part from the song A New Career in a New Town, which was featured on the 1977 album Low. Oh. So he's kind of readdressing themes that he kind of delved into in the 70s when he was in Berlin. Interesting. <clears throat> It was like, Which I think is kind of his way of saying like he's wrapping up, wrapping up, accepting everything. Yeah, De- he's dealt with it. He's moved on. Mm. Um, yeah. So that's, that's... if I were to say like <clears throat> best song on the album, I would say Black Star is probably up there. The, uh, definitely, and uh, for me, Dollar Days. I really like Dollar Days. Yeah, for me, it's like Black Star, Lazarus, or Girl Loves Me. I can't pick between them. But for some reason, I feel Lazarus is, like, particularly <coughs> special right now. Just the instrumentation on that yeah. and just the... Just fucking fantastic. It's, I think that one's the one where it's most obvious, like, that he was, like, preparing. Mm. Like, the whole theme is most obvious in Lazarus. So if you really, like, are into that part of it. Yeah. And it's devastating now to listen to that yeah. song. Because, like, the first time I listened to it, I was like, this is really cool. Mm. And, like... It really explores mortality in a way that Black Star kind of touched upon and had hints to. Mm. But now that he's like literally died two days later, and mm. we found out about it three days later, you just listen to it and you can't stop thinking about that yeah. this is a man giving his like swan song. What was the song where he kept on saying, I'm dying too? Like for it, was it Dollar Days? I can't remember. Hmm. I can't remember. But that was that was the same one with the uh, green England. Then it would be Donald Days. English Evergreens. English Evergreens. <coughs> yeah. I just love this album. What and an I want I want to listen to it on repeat. I was sad I had to go and review other albums this week. Because this one was just... It took the biscuit. It in did. a good way. Yeah, I was loving all the uh, like genres. People were like tagging it with like uh, art rock, jazz rock. Avant garde. Yeah. Pretty accurate. Rock. Yeah. Sweet album. So, scores. Yeah. I'm going to give it a 10. <sighs> nice. Out of 11. 10. <laughs> no. Nice. Yeah. Gareth? I'm going to give it a 9. 9? Nine? 9? Nine? James? I'm going to give it a 9. Okay. There we go. That's it. That's it from us at the Sonic Squeeze. David Bowie, it's a 9, 9, 10 out of 10. Thanks for watching again. We're back. We're back and we're going to be giving you more videos all time. So, you <laughs> like, know. Like every day. Like, yeah. All the time. Like every day. Time. Sonic Squeeze. Sonic Squeeze Adventures. Oh, oh, 100 years. <laughs> 100 years. 100 years more. Com. Sonic Squeeze Adventures. Dot com. <laughs> www. <laughs> we don't have a. Yeah, that's website, not yeah. our website. Don't go looking for it. <laughs> don't go looking for it. <laughs> If you like this this video, give us a thumbs up. If you want to uh, have a little discussion about Bowie, then then leave us a comment. If you want to tell me how wrong I am at pronouncing his name, go ahead. Yeah, we have a go at Gareth. 
I'll be the one responding to yeah, it's true. comments anyway. Just being like, I know! I know he's doing it! I can't stop him, okay? <laughs> so in the, when, you, when, when you get replies, don't be angry at the common... Uh, the, him. The common. The common the man. Com- <laughs> <laughs> Bye! We gotta go now! We gotta go now. <laughs> Kit Campbell here with another episode of the Sonic Squeeze. In fact, we're back. We've been on holiday for how long? Like a month. Like a month. Um, we've been seeing our family, eating lots of dinner, um, partying for the new year, working hard, trying thinking about starting dissertations and then doing... Hey, YouTube! 2016! We're back! Sonic Squeeze, we're, we're back. We're making videos again. I lost confidence. Hey YouTube, it's this instead, <laughs> and also we have some cool things to say about the channel, and it's going good. And what is good about the channel we've done now today? Now we're handing it over to me because I know all the analytics. He's him. We've got over a hundred subscribers. Over a hundred. Channel. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's, it's more than ninety. It's for the whole channel. I thought it was more than that. Now. It's That's over that. ninety. Wow. Well, I mean. Technically, we're on about nine thousand nine hundred and something. Seriously, right, right now. But by the time this comes out, you know. Oh, fair enough. That's we're 90. deceiving you. But we, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we respect you. So. I don't know how that works. Here we go. We have got over a thousand views on our first video, and by first, I don't mean first video on the channel. I mean it's the first video to get a thousand views. <laughs> yes, and that's, that's more than. And 90. that is. Our uh, review of Black Star the Track. By Bowie. Which and is over 90. we are now on 10,000 views.